Hey folks, it's time for the TWIP Pro Photo Critique number 132, Toys. This is TWIP. Hey, welcome back to a, another episode of the TWIP Pro Photo Critique. This is episode number 132. I'm here with my buddy, Mr. Troy Miller, to talk about some of the latest submissions to the TWIP Pro community. Troy, the topic was toys. What do cool. you think? Uh, I'm very impressed. There are some uh, amazing images and some emotional images in there as well. So, yeah, we got some good stuff. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, it's good. And everyone who submitted, thank you for submitting. They were, uh, I hate the word submitting. It sounds so <clears throat> bad. Thank you for offering up your images for us to take a look. <laughs> thank you for submitting your images. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's good. Yeah, so lots of good stuff. Um, for the folks that are, are watching this after the fact, we're recording this and streaming this live on Twitch. And if you want to follow me on Twitch, just head over to twitch.tv slash this week in photo and you'll see this stream and any of the other streams that we do. You can follow me to be notified when we do these live. Also, if you want to see the schedule of upcoming critique topics, just head over to thisweekinfoto.com slash live, and you'll see our calendar of upcoming topics as provided by Troy Miller. So <laughs> Troy, we're, gonna to, we're running out of topics. Well, you, you have a grid, right? You know what all the topics are going to be for the rest of the year, right? Oh, I, I got I got topics for all this year and all next year. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, we're only going to drip them out about a month, maybe six weeks in advance. So, yeah. Cool. All right. You ready to dive in? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Here we go. This is the TWIP Pro community. The We're going to dive into the photo critique topic area. We're going to sort this by date created. So it's last in first critiqued all right so yeah here's our url right there in case you didn't understand me all right so the first one is from jim peters and jim says uh -oh, matchbox cars after 40 to 50 years of use <laughs> oh. you remember matchbox matchbox cars from I do. I have a large collection of them and they're not in this good a condition <laughs> Um, <laughs> these might, have been used these have been played with like they should be played with yeah at, at the beginning of quarantine i decided to clean out my attic and i found all my maxbox cars and there were several in there that were melted i'm not quite oh. sure how that happened but apparently <laughs> it goes back where i light things on fire so yeah i was gonna say <laughs> i was gonna say the pyromaniac and you started young right yeah yeah these these are great though i love i love the 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 setting and you know just the feel of these and the fact that we have that mirror underneath them for that reflection which is really super awesome and yeah. that it's a real reflection that you didn't try to fake it because you know we could tell if it was fake so yeah this, it's yeah. so hard to fake a reflection in it i mean it's it's it, easier to go get a piece of reflective material and put your thing on top of it versus trying to get the perspective and the lighting and all that to be convincing well arguably it's impossible to to mimic some reflections like this you know because you can't see under the car so if you tried to mirror it you couldn't see under the back of the car Right. Because mm -hmm. it wouldn't it wouldn't be there. So um, I really I really just I really just love the 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 image. I love the colors in the background. I, I do wish that the, the lighting was a little bit more sophisticated in that, you know, maybe a little bit of an edge light coming off from the back side, like as if as if that was sunlight and the front could be a little bit dark, you know, something something like that. It's small objects. Macro lighting is really tough. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever tried macro lighting and and um, use the painting with light technique? I've never done painting with light on macro or have I? Uh, I have. Well, actually, I have kind of with with uh, a, a small flashlight and infrared. I've done some of that. So, yeah, I'm not super good at it. Uh, macro is hard to light properly. It is it's really yeah. tough. Yeah. Light goes everywhere. Yeah. Very cool. All right, let's move on to the next shot here. Who is this? This is Jim Peters. Thank you, Jim Peters. Yes, thank you, Jim. 
All right, moving right along to the next shot. Next is Michael Rhino, who's in the chat. Hopefully he's still in the chat. Michael says, our nephew's favorite toy lost the battle with our dog's teeth during a recent visit. Both had fun, and the ball was eventually replaced. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I like I, at first, I thought, you know, maybe maybe the ball just got popped. But if you look nice and close, there are pieces missing out of the ball. So, yeah, that's Nerf. That's a Nerf ball or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's really great. I love I love the look on on your nephew's face. I just love that concentration. Right. That that, that that's really to me, that's kind of the hero of the story. It's just the look on his face and trying to get that ball away. It's the cheeks. Look at the cheeks. <laughs> it's effort right there. <laughs> He'd been running out in the backyard a little while. Uh huh. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, that's fun. I, really cool shot. So, what do you think of this as a photo? Uh, is this more, you know, sort of family archive type shot, or you have you have a different perspective? Yeah, I I think the thing the thing with this image that I struggle with is the upper right quadrant is so vacant. There's really just not a lot there, and I really wish that there was there was something there. Um, I think that, you know, for me, a shot like this, maybe just crop in on the hands and the dog's face. You know, we really know what that's all about. If you really just want to fill the frame, I would hate to miss, you know, his face, but it's not the ideal direction because that back quadrant is so empty. Yeah, yeah, for sure. A Michael Rhino says, uh, I missed a generation. This is actually my nephew's son. I just didn't want to feel that old. <laughs> <laughs> But now you told us. So now, <laughs> how do you feel now? <laughs> so is your nephew's son your nephew? Is it still your nephew? How's Great that nephew? Work? Great nephew? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know how that works. Uh, I don't it's know. all, there are too many layers now. Yeah, yeah. I do shot, maybe, maybe, maybe crop it vertical. You know, I know you don't want to crop off the, the dog, but really, I mean, we're. I think it's okay. I think if we crop it vertical, and get rid of just just try to get rid of those bushes. Don't cut into his feet too much. Mm -hmm. I think you'd have a much much stronger image. Or even crop in tight like this, right? So you just have your nephew yeah. or your great nephew and the face of the dog coming out of nowhere, it's you and yeah, yeah, your great 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 nephew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Michael. <laughs> That's so sad. I love it. Cool shot though, man. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. All right. Next up is Mark Charette, whom I have a call with in about 40 minutes. So we got to get this done. Yep. Uh, Mark says, with the passing of Bond this Friday. Wait. Who passed this Friday? Dog. Oh, oh, his dog, Bond. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes, I remember that post. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with the passing of Bond this Friday, I thought that the right thing to do would be to have a photo of Bond's toys. Yes, with colors adjusted. To what dogs see, mostly yellows and blues and very little red or green. This is uh, Eeyore, uh, Spotty Dog, Raffi, Pandy, and Monkey. They're going to have to find a new doggy buddy now. Man, that's so sad. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a bummer. Yeah, uh, I love the shot. I think this is I think this is great. Even if I didn't know that story and I didn't didn't read the the comment until I saw the photo. Um, I love how it's done. I love the toning, the simplicity. We're drawn into the colors right away. We know exactly what he's showing us. Um, you know, burn down that background a little bit, which is great. Maybe a little more foreground cushion burn down would be nice. Keep us in, in the center of the toys, but perfect. This is yeah, about yeah, you. Yeah, and this this is interesting. Um, I've never seen someone do a shot like this from a color perspective of an animal that has certain color blindness, right? We've seen physical perspective, like shoot from a dog's eye view or from a low angle or whatever. But I, this is the first time I've seen someone trying to approximate what a dog would actually see. This is really cool. Yeah, that's very clever. Yeah. And it's, you know, this is, this is nice that this is a very emotional image for him as well. And that, you know, this is, this is more than just a snapshot for him. This is something that will sort of mark that period in time. Once these, these toys kind of go away or get stored, he's going to have that memory. So I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Very cool. All right. Mark Charette, thank you for the shot. And again, sorry for your loss, man. It's, uh, it's tough. Yeah. A lot of us have lost pets and it is, yeah. 
our fur kids. Not, not fun at all. All right, moving right along to the next shot. Next shot is from Craig Colvin. I know that guy. <laughs> the, Craig, Craig, the kids are all gone, so now I'm all. Oh, this, is, <laughs> this is the empty nester shot, Craig. <laughs> oh, man. Man, you should have put like a, a little a whiskey bottle in there with him or something. <laughs> a <Yeah>. beer bottle. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I thought the, I thought the kids' room was supposed to be converted to like a den or a entertainment room or something once they leave the nest. Right. Right. I I I love this shot. I think I think it's great. I like the fact that <clears throat> you know the door and the jam and the carpet and everything is dark, nice, uh, you know, m- muted tones, and then that way the bear can kind of stick out. And I think that's mm-hmm. I think it's a good, really good use of light and composition where the bear is in the top third. So, yeah, <laughs> ginger bearding in the uh, chat says maybe put a butcher's knife in there. <laughs> that is kind of creepy. <laughs> that is kind of red rum looking, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 a little bit. I didn't want to go that far, but you know, maybe, yeah, maybe. yeah. yeah. Cool shot. It's definitely in. outside of Craig Colvin's normal genre of photography, right there. Yeah. And there's a little bit of Photoshop-y work that I can see um, right right, where? At, uh, right where the head and the arm come together. There's a little triangle that didn't get masked out. And the background to the right of the bare camera left against the jam, it, do, it looks like it didn't get masked out or oh. properly right in there. Oh, caught you, Craig Colvin. Yeah. <laughs> I try. I don't try to be too. I just I, yeah, I uh, said the shot I said the shot is not normally in Craig's uh you know very normal nude. genre. He says he says the bear is nude. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well there then it, it gives the perception of like the background was erased. Um there's something in there. Like the carpet going up to camera left next to the jam kind of ends uh, oddly. And so that's what made me think that there was a mask. Oh, yeah, he says he only masked the door jam. Huh. Cool. All right. Yeah, Craig, I expected you. I expected something more adult from you with the topic toys. <laughs> you know, yeah, he's always going to zig when we think he's going to zag. What's like, not adult about that? I mean, maybe that's his best friend, you know, when he talks to him. And yeah, that's right. Know. Furries. Yeah. All right. Moving on to the next one. Next shot. Thank you, Craig Colvin. Next shot is from Armando Brook. Armando says the bird was just playing with its with uh with is a toy the lizard or its toy a lizard. This was captured with a six hundred millimeter lens in Sao Paulo. Wow! Look at those colors. Look at that. Yeah. No, that's, that's a, not a fun toy. <laughs> that's food. That's not a toy. Yeah. Maybe maybe for that bird it was a toy for a while. I know that my cat yeah. like to catch lizards and play with them for a long time. So. That lizard is screaming, I am not a toy. Put me down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I was just thinking it's a, this would be a great nature shot. We don't have a nature cat, nature uh, critique yet. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. But I, I love the, I love the composition. I think it's really wonderful. I think we have too much space on the right. Again, there's, you know, there's just, there's space we don't need. It, it doesn't add to the story. Um, mm-hmm. So very easily take out like part of that space. And yeah, uh, or or if I think I think the space would have been easier to to understand if the bird was a little bit further into it or if there was more space on the left. I think the fact that it's it's so tight over here and so loose over here is making your brain wonder what's happening on this side of the image. Right. Yeah, that's definitely tight on the left as well. Yeah, there's just too much space to the right. Mm -hmm. And you're going to say clone this out, right? Yes. Please clone out the clone out that stick. I know that's messing with your OCD, right now. <laughs> but be careful when you clone that out because there is there's patterns in the feathers, there's tonality patterns, and you, you've got to make sure all of those things line up at the at the smallest level because otherwise our brains will just see the 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 broken lines, and that's mm-hmm. a telltale sign of you know Photoshop work. So. Yeah. It looks like there's a branch. He shot this with a 600 mil lens, right? So it looks like there's a branch in the foreground right here cutting through the bird. Mm-hmm. See that? Mm-hmm. So I, I probably would have 
fix that too. I think that would have been a relatively easy fix to get rid of that while you're getting rid of that stick. I I actually think that getting rid of that that shadow that out of focus stick is going to be tough. Um, you think so? I do. I th- because you know it's it's what it's doing is it's interrupting the texture pattern of the feathers behind it. So you've got to change the color, and you've got to be careful with the texture. So I. I don't know those. I hate removing those kind of things because it's just they never look right when they're when they're taken out. It's so, be good practice, though. It's good that practice. Would be, Something really hard like that is really good practice. You know what would be great is Armando, if you're up for it, throw that in the Twip community and let everybody let everybody have a go at it. See how how well they do at cleaning up that shadow. That yeah. would be great. That would be a good test. Yeah, throw the raw file up there. Let people have at it. See what they can do. Yeah, try to get that shadow out. I think I think it's going to be challenging. I think that shadow is going to be challenging. Yeah. A cool shot. Very yep, cool shot. Very cool. But again, I'm going to say that that's not a toy. That is not, <laughs> <laughs> not, <laughs> no, no, none of the life forms in the shot are thinking that that's a toy. <laughs> so. No. Cool. Good doc says off, right. offload your work. Yeah, just put it in the community. Let let everybody else fix it for you. <laughs> yeah, good doc. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. And this, you know, we're reading off the chat while we're doing this live, folks. So if you're watching this after a fact, after the fact, all the more reason to join us for the live critique so that you can, you know, interject and uh join us for these critique sessions. Uh next shot up is from Lamb. Lamb says, uh, my entry for the theme toys, sir. Uh, you looking for a Ferrari, Lamborghini, BMW, Bentley, Bugatti, Maserati. We have a full range, even the one still in the drawing board. Just name it. Yeah. Look at that. Those are cool. I want one. Yeah, I'm wondering what those are. Those for like, are those like the kids get to go take those out and play with those? Are those like, yeah, those are push, push cards, little push cards. Oh, okay. I wonder if they're electric though. I wonder if they have motors in them or do you have to like pedal or, or, you know, is it <laughs> I'm not more all worried about how you move? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't have a car like that without a motor in it. Come on. Right. Right. I I'm I'm wondering I know that he cropped it to keep the cars in at the top, but that that negative white space in the top left corner is kind of bugging me. So I think if you cropped it so it was just full of cars, I'd be okay with that. And then just do maybe a vignette on him but i like the shot i like all those toy cars i think that would be great yeah yeah i think you're right if you if you drew the focus into because we could see the roll of cars on top but if you either cropped a little bit tighter and or used a vignette so that we could see what he's doing and why he's doing it and one specific car that he's chosen like in this case i don't know what that is a mercedes um but you know that he's chosen that particular car so that we we see what's what his intent is the subject's intent um that would make a little more sense right and, and anytime that you have a corner like that in your image that kind of goes off into nothing it's affectionately known as a trap um mm-hmm. because no matter how often you look at this image your eyes always going to go back there and yeah. it it traps your eye because you're you're looking for something so um, if you can't get rid of it, try to put some some tone in there. Even a little bit of color will just make it feel like there's there's something there. Yeah, and you know we always say, and and everyone in this that's watching this knows that in a photo the eye tends to always go to the brightest parts of the image. Um, in this case, it's that upper right trap, right? So yeah. you want to bring that down. It seems like that'd be relatively easy to bring down. If you wanted to do it accurately, you could, you know, like you said, throw a color back there with a selection or just a gradient mask, you know, back there that, that darkens from the top left down to the bottom right a little bit or crop or whatever tool you want to use. Right. Right. Put some clouds in there. Use Luminar. Throw some clouds up there. I knew you were going to say that. There's some clouds. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> It Why? Could been, it could have been painted on the wall. I mean, like, who knows? Yeah, put a hot air balloon back there. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And giraffes. And it's in a giraffe. Yeah, let's put a giraffe in there. All right, Lamb. Thank you for your shot. Always. Yeah, very cool. All right. Next shot up is from our friend Stephen Scharf. Now, this is a real vehicle. He says, toys for big boys. He who dies with the most toys wins. Porsche G. 
T2RS. Wow. Uh, oh, yeah. And he put a little note about why this car is amazing. Look at that. Look at those colors. Or the lack yeah. of colors. I mean, I meant the highlights and shadows of this vehicle. Yep. Yeah. Very, very well done. I am I am zooming in and I am perusing the image looking for <laughs> you imperfections know. that you can complain about. <laughs> But you know what? When when you get an image that's this clean right off the bat, you got to go in and you got to start looking. Um, yeah, yeah. I I love the I love the tonality and the conversion. I don't know what color this car may have been, but the conversion is done really really nicely. I'm wondering. Yeah. I know it's not black. This car was not a black car. This it's maybe. Uh, I don't think it could have been a black car because the tones would have been too close to the trim. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing, wow, I'm trying to figure out the color. I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's either silver, right? It's either I silver. silver. You think it's silver? I feel silver. Yeah. I mean, that's what I, if I was to buy this car, it would have to be silver. I would not buy this car in red. <laughs> I would not buy it in green, <laughs> yellow. Yeah. This would be silver or Steve black. Steven already told us he... <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said silver. Yeah, there he goes. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Silver. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to figure it out. We weren't even looking at the chat. <laughs> we're trying to figure it out. Let the record show I was right. Was... <laughs> yeah, it's because you read the chat. Um, no, I did. <laughs> you know, so, you know, this is this is a common theme for me is, is I always look at the space around the vehicle and or around the subject and decide, like, do we need that much vertical space? I would say that that in in two ways I look at this is if this was my car and my property, I would probably want to see that vertical space um, as as just sort of an automobile fan, as a car fan. I don't really care about the vertical space, so I would probably crop it to be more horizontal. I would probably take take some of that that vertical space out, make it nice and tight and just make it the car. Right. Mm -hmm. and that yeah. depends on your use. Um but exquisitely well done. It is sharp from the front wheel to the back wheel, which is which is very intentional, and you need to work hard at that, and that's really nice. What do you think about the the crop, though? You know, do you in terms of it being tight here in the front bumper, tight down here by the wheel, tight here by the back bumper? Obviously, that's intentional. You know, Stephen did that on purpose. But do you right. think it worked here to to like bring you into the car, or is it does it put too much tension because the car is so close to the border? I I like it that way. You know, I think this is uh this is sort of one of those kind of images where it's like um it's like a mantelpiece, right? This photo is kind of like a mantelpiece and it needs to be as much of the car as possible. So, I like that. I'm okay with that. If this car was on a on a street, if we saw, you know, a divided road in front of us or something like that, I would I would have this sense like, okay, this thing wants to go in in this case, it's not. It's sitting in the driveway. It's sitting by the house. Like I'm good with that. Yeah, make it tight all the way around. Yeah, Stephen says two things in the chat. He said uh, it was originally shot for the owner of the property that it's on, uh, and he cropped it this way to show the muscularity of the car. Okay, right by that. Nice. I love it. And and Good Dog says if you're trying to figure out the color, then the pick failed. Not, not really. I mean, I think that, I think that it's not about the photo. We're just trying to, to figure out like the conversion method. And I always think of those things when I see black and white, mm -hmm. because, because for me, some of that can speak to the skill of the artist creating it and the technical skill required to do a conversion that looks really good. So if this was a red car, then, then this would be an exceptional conversion. So there was technical skill in there. So yeah. And I, you know, my, my thought process is less deep than that. Mine was more of, <laughs> Hey, if I could afford this car, what color would I buy? <laughs> and it would have been silver or black. You know? <laughs> so, Yeah. Yeah. Great control of highlights, specular highlights, uh, everywhere are, are fantastic. And that's hard to do, you know, done yeah, very well. Very, very cool. Good work. Stephen Scharf, as always, Stephen is so meticulous. I love it. All right. Next shot up is from James Glenny. The ginger beard. Ginger bearding. <laughs> ginger bearding. He says, yeah. I think Dot Jane and R2 are up to something shady. Notes. Uh, that's real fire. And it's a three image focus stack 
because even at f8 wow depth of field is shallow yes yeah yeah it really is it's real fire oh that's great fire that is so cool um i love i love the story that's going on in here and the direction of light is well done because it's lit you know from love it's lit from the fire's perspective which is exactly how it should be what is that sitting on though what's that what surface is that fire on because it looks like some sort of fur uh which is flammable so what, 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 are, you, what are you doing there ginger bearding what's happening here I don't think I don't think wool is super flammable. Uh, cotton's no. not flammable. No, you need an accelerant in there for that to help. So probably okay. Um, what I am seeing in this image, I love the storytelling of this. I love I love the whole thing about it. It's it's really great. The lighting is fantastic. The composition is really solid. I am seeing some of the um, the stacking and the masking that's going on in here, and so those are those are usually really. It's just really tough to get. So you got to be really meticulous. Um, like your statue's left hand, you know, it's soft around the outside edge. So the masking wasn't as as tight as it is like at her elbow or at her waist. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's just, that just takes time. It's just, it's really hard to do. So ginger ginger bearding says it's totally safe. It just melts in reference to this first. <laughs> <episode>. <laughs> Yeah, it just melts. Yeah. Very but cool. I, I love the concept. Great concept. Yeah, this is fun. This fun stuff. Toys is a fun topic. Good job there, Troy Miller. <laughs> Knowledge of what burns and needs an accelerant and melted match plus cars. I think someone has issues. I don't have issues. I'm just good at expressing oh, my love for wait, fire. Wait, wait, wait. Knowledge of what burns and needs accelerant. I... Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, you just, you know, knowledgeable about what, what burns and how and why. It's science. Come on. It is science. Oh, ginger right. beauty. But it's a synthetic blanket on an ottoman in a bathroom with lots of water nearby. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. You were safe. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, I don't know where you are, Ginger Bearding, but Troy Miller and I <laughs> yeah. live in California, which is you know, experiencing its own accelerated fire as, as we speak. No kidding. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Next shot up is the opposite of that. Wet toys from Craig Stanfley down under. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> All right, look at that. Nice. Nice. I that love it. Yeah, I love the, the, you know, that I could just imagine like, you know, the kid's underwater and he's like, he's going to get those things. And, you know, dad's helping him get in there and just play. I just, I love the whole, the whole idea of all of that. Um, yeah. You know, you can, I don't know. I, Frederick, you can kind of see me. I'm always got my hand up. I'm always trying to figure out, like, what am I going to crop off? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's always, he's always, <laughs> always, I'm always like doing this behind the scene. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. That, that right so there. what do you say? You would crop this square or would you leave it as is? I like it as is. I like the expanse showing that this just big body of water with the uh, Nirvana baby in it. Yeah, no, I'm good with the space. No, I'm good. After all the hand gestures, uh, I'm good. I'm good with the space. My my only sort of wish was I wish dad's face was underwater, too. I just I wish he was in in the water. Right. Like, I feel mm -hmm. like that would just really sell it better. Um, you know, I'd look at this like if this was an ad for those toys. Uh, what dad has half a face like we need all of dad in there. Right. Yeah. And you can't really crop him out like he needs to be there because his hands are there and his hands are connecting him to you know to the child and that's just super fun so but i love everything else about it i think it's great yeah it's really cool it's good to see craig using this pool for something other than you know high art nudes and <laughs> cool shots like that he's actually doing you know fun stuff like this too yeah, he's like swimming with it yeah mm-hmm very yeah, cool. great underwater shot though. It's it's very clean. It's very clear. I'm. I would imagine that you had to go in there and clean up a few things. Um, I can see some. Looks like cloning tracks. Um, on the around here. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, I wonder. I wonder. Yeah, it's hard to tell with the water, though, isn't it? And that's one of the down the downfalls of Photoshop is it, it the the content aware and some of the smart cloning it doesn't handle textures really well. It it blurs the the, ed, the sides and it's it's just it's really rough. Sometimes it creates these weird coagulated patterns. So you got to just be really really super conscious of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And keeping your depth of field cloned in exactly the same place as the place you're cloning from and to and yeah. Great cool. shot. Good work. Would you have um like would it be better to remove this green one? Mm, or is yeah. it good to have them both in there? I like them both in there. It's fine. Yeah. It actually adds some it actually adds um some some color, an extra hook. So the color in in this case is really good because it really gives you something for your eyes to keep landing on and keep you there. Yep. Very yep. cool. I like the shot. Definitely has that Nirvana feel. You remember the Nirvana? Oh, yeah. Nevermind yeah. album. <laughs> that was like King Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. I was <laughs> listening to that on the plane yesterday. All right. Very cool. Thank you, Craig Stampley. Next shot up is from Karen Sweeney. Karen says entry for toys, photo critique, forgotten favorites, focus stack, 17 images with subsequent back black and white conversion. Full disclosure, I've edited a couple of times after posting. My bad. It's okay. All right. If my computer will let me scroll back up. Yeah, it's not, can't see the image. not mine either. It's not letting me get to the image. No, oh, there, it is. there it goes. Weird. It's my like our network's connected. Uh huh. Look at that. That's Humpty. Wow. Humpty Humpty Dumpty sat on a bear. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Humpty Dumpty sat on a bear. Humpty Dumpty wore no underwear. <laughs> <That's what this laughs> Where does your brain go? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and they're worried about me and fire. I know. I know. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Be very afraid. Um, I'm just kind of zooming in, looking at looking at this image. Uh, it's very, it's it's nice. I love the fact that it's sharp all the way through, and that you can really sort of see the wear and the love that's been giving into these into these toys. I, I really like that. Don't yeah. what is it? Low basis. Don't Google that. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. What, what? Uh, oh, Humpty Dumpty sitting on a bear. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably what he's. <laughs> Yeah, don't Google that. You know, just FYI, Troy, it was a matter of uh, technical understanding. I think StreamYard delays are the comments coming in from real time a little bit. So if you want to see them more real time, you got to watch them on Twitch. Uh, I am watching them on Twitch. Good. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I forgot that StreamYard did that, but you're right. Yeah, so I'm watching them on Twitch. Yep, yep. So I like the black and white conversion. I think that that's a good call. Um, it gets rid of any distractions with the colors that might be there. You know, not knowing what all the colors are, but I'm just, let's assume that there's a lot of colors. Uh, the black and white conversion is really, really nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a fun shot. As toys, as toys should be in a toy toy category. Right, right. The you know from from a lighting perspective, um, I like how well it's lit, and I like how we can see deep into the image. I think that you know we have a challenge with that shadow. So this is you know if if this is a person, we would want to have the camera above. You know we want to have the strobe or the lighting source above the camera and then off camera, say to the left, maybe I don't know, like twenty degrees, thirty degrees, mm. to cast that shadow down behind our subject, and that would be. Mm-hmm. That would really help with the lighting and it would create more texture in in our subject matter, you know, in the fur and in the clothing and things like that. Yeah. Or use a use a softer light source to make it less crisp. Yeah. Yeah. Softer light source would most definitely help a lot. Which means a larger light source, not softer. Larger. Correct. Yeah. Bounce it off a wall or you mm. know, something like you know, the that. ceiling or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Or use like a Gary Fong thing. Would you use that? <coughs> what was that? I didn't hear. I said, would you use a Gary Fong light modifier <laughs> on there? I heard you. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> you're trying to I trap it. I, know what you're doing. I am trying to trap you. Yeah, I'm trapping you in your own words. All right, cool shot. Thank you, Karen Sweeney. 
Oh. All right. And our last shot is from Peter Levshin. Why is Peter managed to be the last one? Because he's the first to submit all the time. That's why. Yes, he is. Yeah, he's very. He's, he's very, Yeah, he likes to he likes to get in there and compete. So, yeah, um, Peter says, I was told toys was the new topic for the next critiques. Um, I got this for a very for a very reliable, reliable insider or from he's trying to say, if I had the money, I would buy my to- this would be my toy. Let's see. Look at that. Wow. Very, very McDonald's. But DHL has McDonald's colors. So. Or does McDonald's have DHL colors? I'm going to say, I don't know who was there first, the, the chicken or the egg. I'm going to go with McDonald's. I think McDonald's, McDonald's was here yeah. before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is this is a really fun shot. I, you know, ini- right away, I wanted to crop off the left side of the frame because I didn't get a chance to look at it, right? Like my initial... My initial thought was, oh, there's a lot of space behind him. We don't need that. But there's a car back there. And that that gives a lot of intention for space. And it gives a lot of storytelling to this. So I really appreciate that that, that horizontal crop with that car back there um, is wonderful. And the panning, the panning is done really well. Mm-hmm. So I like that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's nice. We don't we don't see very many motorsports shots out of Peter. This is I think this is one of the few that we've seen him do. This yeah, is- I'm wondering where he shot this. I know that I know that he you know would watch the Grand Prix in uh, Singapore a lot. He would watch races in Singapore. I don't know if this is there. He'd have to tell us. Only- yeah, there are no telltale signs in there. I'm looking for you know telltale signs of the location. I can't tell. Stephen says this is Long Beach. Long, I was going to say Stephen Sharp might know. Stephen, yeah. says Long Beach. Stephen also says uh, this is a 2007 Porsche LMP2 prototype. I can't deny or confirm that. <laughs> uh, he also says it's a hybrid racing prototype. Can't com- can't deny or confirm that. And it's in Long Beach. Uh, still, same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great would you, job. Would you ever drive? Would you ever paint your truck these in this color scheme, Troy? Um, if it went that fast, I'd paint it any color, <laughs> <I would care. laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, no, it's good. Good colors. You know, the, the, the thing about this kind of shot, and I know Steven and anybody who shot motorsports understands, um, it's not easy to do, right. The, the, mm-hmm. to focus and to pan and to get that timing, right. So in this case, uh, this was pure luck on Peter's part and no, <laughs> um, it, it's a very well. <laughs> I knew you were going to get a zing in there about Peter. You all, <laughs> poor Peter, uh, and he's not even in here to dis, to uh, to uh, defend himself. Yeah, yeah. No, great, great shot, great crop. I, I love that. Yeah, I wish it was. Yeah. You know, I wish we all had those toys. Very good. Uh, snapshot artist in the chat says. Uh, there's a, oh yeah yeah oh that's Mike that must be Michael Duray okay thank you Mr Duray for letting me know um, Michael says awaiting the return of the grandchildren on a why did you disappear oh, okay there we go on a gloomy day a gloomy day as soon as I heard the subject for this next critique I knew immediately the direction I would take it's as if it was already set up for me <laughs> oh man that's great look at that. That That's is. like the entire world right now. That yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you're right. You're right. We all want to go outside. It's all gloomy and rainy, and it's just you know. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, only in California, those you'd have to change the hue of that outside scene to orange, and it would be closer, and remove the raindrops. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I I really I really love this. I I think we should center the window um a little bit more in frame so crop a little bit off the side but but not a whole lot more there. Yeah. This is fun. This is a fun shot. Yep. Yep, it's great. Yeah, I, I really don't have a lot to add to this. I mean, it's it's done well. We've got this dodging going on in the lower right hand corner. The 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 light itself is a little bit hot, but that's kind of the nature of it. It's just going to do that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I like it too. This is a fun shot. Very Good. fun. Yeah, I agree. I agree with centering the rectangle within the rectangle as the frame. 
Right. And I actually, I actually like the border on this one. I like this one having sort of a constrained black border to trap the image. Cause it, it, for me, it lends to the idea that he's trying to get to that. These guys are trapped inside. So you throw that black border on there just subliminally, it traps the image even further. And if it were, if that window rectangle were centered in the frame, then it would, you know, just sort of add that level of symmetry to it as well. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's great. And I love the, 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 the mix of tones too, right? We got that blue outside and then that warm inside. So, you know, <clears throat> anybody who sat inside during a rainstorm, like, you know what that feels like, you know, you're warm, you're comfortable, you feel safe, cold and rainy outside. Yep. Love it. Cool shot. And Michael, Gray, Thank you for, for letting me know that that was down below. Cause I surely would have missed that. <laughs> so yeah and he was actually the first submitter not peter he was the first one he was he was very cool all right well time has come for us to figure out what our favorite shot is what do you think well i picked i picked last time um, um let's see let's see what you're gonna pick i have two favorites uh, damn you Why are you gonna make me pick all right you have two favorites uh-huh okay i'm scrolling through now let me go ahead and share what i'm looking at they both have toys. Um, so I'll give you I'll give you that hint. You said what? They're both what? They both have toys. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it's not the lizard. And it, it's not it's not Armando's with well, that could be a toy, depending. <laughs> Some people play with their food before they eat, right? Some people. Oh, it's so hard. I like all of them. All right. But you know, maybe it's because my brain is in car acquisition mode right now, but I think I like I think I like Steven. I think I like this one because it is. I mean, we never said toy toy as in, you know, children's toys. This is, you know, if you got if you got 20 million in the bank, this could be considered a toy. Right? <laughs> this is very true. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's yeah. one of your 30 toys. I don't know. So this my vote would be for Steven Sharps. What, what, what's your vote? Yeah, no, I love it. That's a good choice. That's a great choice. It was either that or Mark Shretz. Okay, let's bring up Mark Charette's again. Uh, that was up here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Yeah, yep. Yep, very cool. Yeah. I like this one too. I like yeah. them both. Yeah, I do like the car. I do like the car. Yeah, definitely mm -hmm. like the car. Yeah. The guy that owns this car uh, are incredibly wealthy. Yeah. See, so that's that's just a different level of toy, right? Like... I buy an, I buy a lens, a five hundred dollar lens, and he buys you know whatever that thing costs. Uh huh. Yeah. Or you just buy a remote control version of this car and drive it around and pretend you're in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man, lovely, very cool. All right. Well, Stephen Sharf, thank you for submitting and congratulations on, very on nice. being, the favorite, being the favorite for this week. So uh, now, um, next week, next week's topic. Yeah, I know what it is. It is. Yeah. It's if you go to this com slash live, you too will know what it is. It <laughs> is. Tell us, Troy, what is it? Strength. It is strength. strength. Yeah. So that that should be interesting. I'm interested to see because that that can manifest in any number of ways. Right. Like from the um, uh, I'm going to stop that screen share. Yeah. From strength as in bodily strength. You know, you are right. a strong person all the way through to the strength of like a steel girder or, you know, something that is designed to hold things up. That could be strength as well. Yeah. Like pillars or structure or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's a yeah. lot to that. And so that's, that's sort of one of those, um, one of those topics where one is one topic before it is kind of an absolute. It's a, it's a physical thing where this one is just, more obscure so you have the ability to be a lot more creative in what you're what you're going to be able to do yeah yeah that's going to be cool yeah that'll be photo critique number 133 if if the world is still here on monday the 21st we will record and stream that um and then if you want to get a head start on the next week that topic is smoke but again if you decide to go forward and record the critique 134 smoke or uh, record your or create your photo for that we don't submit it only submit your photos during the week uh prior to that critique or else we'll, right. we'll skip it we will absolutely skip it yeah yeah good dog says <laughs> california has already started on smoke 
<laughs> I know. It looks just like that right now, my friend. Yeah, it uh, does. Yeah, it's sad. It is sad. Well, hopefully when we get to the 28th, we'll be talking about, you know, the we'll be talking about the fires in the past tense. Let's hope for that. Right. Well, there's yeah, was it last year Australia was on fire? This year Southern California's on fire or all of California, parts of mm-hmm. Arizona, right? Is it Arizona, yeah. Nevada? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, all over. <laughs> Yep, it is not fun. It is not fun. All right, so remember next next week's weeks. I can't even talk. Next week's topic um, for the photo critique is strength. So good luck. Let's see what yeah. you guys got. Let's see what you got. And if you're not a member, if you're watching this and you're not a member of the Twip Pro community, please become a member. Member, just head over to the site thisweekinphoto.com and um, you'll see links all over the front page to join us, so you can submit your images as well. This is Twitter.